All right, today we're going to talk about um, electron dot diagrams and Lewis dot structures. And we may have done this with a covalent activity in class as well, so it shouldn't be too much of a reach for some people. Okay, we've talked about the fact that a lot of atoms want to fill their outer energy shells by sharing electrons in covalent bonds. And they want to follow the octet rule. And the octet rule pretty much refers to the fact that a compound will tend to form so that each atom has an octet or eight electrons in its highest energy level by gaining, losing, or sharing electrons. And we've seen this. It's the whole one of the concepts between the idea of in that last P, if we look at whatever the S and the P sublevel are, that it's filled. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay, sorry, seven and eight. Now there are a couple of exceptions. The duet rule is only going to apply to helium and hydrogen and that's going to be the fact that they only want two to make them happy. And the reason it makes them happy is it lowers their energy. Okay, there are a few exceptions. Um, the only exception we're going to be familiar with if less than eight is boron. Boron only needs six in its outer energy shell. If you look at boron on the periodic table, it has three valence electrons. And what will happen is it will form a covalent bond at those three electrons, it makes it happy, and then it's good to go. Now, if there's more than eight, technically it can be anything in the third period or higher, because what will happen is they will use the empty d orbital to kind of spread out. We'll see this on occasion, particularly with sulfur and phosphorus, um, also arsenic and selenium, and sometimes iodide, but anything lower can spread out. And you're going to see that it's pretty obvious for the ones that we have to know about. And this is what they look like. So instead of having eight electrons out, um, sulfur here is going to have one, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Chlor phosphorus is going to be responsible for ten um, because it will get credit for all the ones that it is sharing as well. So it will have ten electrons. All right, now for Lewis structures, we do dot diagrams, but for the entire molecule, okay, the entire molecule. Now the atomic symbols represent the nucleus the core and the core electrons. Remember, core electrons are ones that are not given away. They're kind of locked in for the, when we write the noble gas notation, they're the ones that are represented by that noble gas notation. Dots or dashes are rep going to represent the valence electrons. Now unshared electrons, or lone pairs, will pair or a pair of electrons not involved in the bonding and they're written around only one symbol. And for bonding electrons, they're written in between two atoms as a dash. Okay, so single bonds is the sharing of one pair of electron. They are the weakest and the longest. Double is sharing of two pairs of electrons. They are stronger and shorter. Triple is the sharing of three pairs of electrons that are the strongest and the shortest. And we refer to the term multiple bonds as including both triple and double bonds on these. All right, so if we draw Lewis dot structures, there's a few steps. The first is finding the number of valence electrons in each atom and adding them up. Okay, then you draw the atoms next to each other in the way that they would bond. You add one bonding pair between each connected, you add the rest until they all have eight, considering some exceptions. All right, now like always, I realize the rules don't make a ton of sense unless you see some samples. So let's start with methyl chloride. We would not know how to name this compound right now, so don't worry about it. You've got um, covalent, but it's more than two, so we may get there eventually. All right, carbon. There is one carbon. It has four valence electrons, so it gives a total of four. Hydrogen has a total. There's one valence electron per hydrogen. There are three of them, so it's going to donate a total of three. Chlorine has seven valence electrons. There's one of them. It has seven. And remember, when you're finding val valence electrons, you just move across the periodic table, and you can count those up. All right, so the total is 14 electrons. We put carbon in the middle. Then the first thing that we do is we go ahead and we place electrons, pairs of electrons between, between all the atoms we want to bond together, and they get credit for sharing them. And then we're going to go ahead and put the extra ones, because if we back up for a second, right now hydrogen has two, each hydrogen has two, carbon gets credit for eight, so it's happy. Chlorine's not happy yet, but luckily, we had six more to make chlorine happy. So we've mapped two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen 10, 12, 14 electrons. We've mapped all of our electrons and all of the atoms are happy. And what I mean by happy is the fact that hydrogen gets credit for two. So it's following the duet rule. 
Car uh, chlorine gets credit for 8, so it's following the octet, and carbon gets credit for 8, so it's following the octet, so everybody is happy. Now, when we write the Lewis dot structure, however, we write it like this. Okay, hydrogen, 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 and then chlorine. We write the, every bond gets a line, and the lone pairs get written as dots. All right, let's look at ammonia. That's NH3. Um, you guys would probably call it nitrogen trihydride right now, but the correct molecule should be ammonia. If we look at valence electrons, okay, nitrogen is going to donate five. There is one of them. Each hydrogen is going to donate one. There are three of them for a total of three. Now when we write this compound, we're going to go ahead, so we've got eight valence electrons to map. I'm going to go ahead and put nitrogen right in the middle. I'm going to put hydrogen all around. I'm going to start by putting pairs of electrons between the atoms, so hydrogen is happy. Hydrogen's happy and hydrogen's happy because they follow the duet rule. Nitrogen technically needs two more because it only has six and I have two more left. So I put the other two up here as a lone pair and nitrogen is happy. And if I redraw that as what we refer to as a Lewis dot structure, I still draw the lone pairs here and then I replace all of the single bonds with lines and that would be my final answer for a Lewis dot structure. All right, dinitrogen, diatomic nitrogen. Um, if we look at valence electrons, each nitrogen has five. There's going to be two of them for a total of ten electrons. So I'm going to go ahead and put them side by side here and try to make everybody happy using single bonds. So I would need two in the middle, and then I'll try to make everyone happy this way. So two, four, six, eight. 10. Okay, I'm out of electrons. Nitrogens aren't happy yet. So when I don't have enough electrons, I have to end up using um, double or triple bonds. And this is, or in other words, I have to share more of them. So since I'm short two pairs, it's going to mean I'm going to have to share two more pairs. So this is how I'm going to go ahead and write this. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put three pairs in between each nitrogen and they're each going to get a lone pair. So I've mapped two, four, six, eight, ten electrons and this nitrogen gets credit for eight so it's happy. This nitrogen gets credit for eight so everybody's happy. Now when I draw this structure I'm going to still keep my lone pairs but I'm going to have a triple bond because I'm sharing three pairs of electrons and that would be my final answer. All right, let's do one more here. We've got CH2O. Um, carbon is going to give us four valence electrons. There's one of them. Hydrogen gives us one valence electron. There's two of them. Oxygen gives us six. So we've got four plus two plus six is going to be twelve. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and write this. I'm going to put carbon, I'm going to put hydrogen, a hydrogen, and I'm going to put oxygen. Carbon is always in the middle on these um, just because and most of the time you're only going to have one central atom and that you know the, car the hydrogens are coming off of carbon because it's listed after the carbon. Okay, so let's start with single bonds. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Okay, I know I don't have space over here, but oxygen's not happy yet. So if you remember before, when we don't have enough electrons to use single bonds, we're going to have to use double bonds. So I'm going to go ahead and put a double bond right here. Hydrogen's happy. Carbon's happy. Right. Oxygen's happy. So my structure is going to look like this. C, H, oops, H, double bond O and then I still have to draw the lone pairs. Okay? Alright, now one other thing we gotta look at is when we do Lewis structures for the polyatomic ions. Now hopefully remember they are a charged group of covalently bonded um, atoms. For example, this is cyanide. Now when we do the Lewis structure, the process is the same except we have to account for this change in charge, which is gonna be right there. So we've got our valence electrons from carbon, our valence electrons from nitrogen. We add one to account for the overall one minus charge of the ion. So then when we write the Lewis dot structure, it's got to look like this. Okay, now I only have 10, so I have to put a triple bond, and the other thing is I have to put the whole thing in brackets 
and put the charge on the outside. So same process except we have to account for that charge. And here's one more, here's ammonium. All right, ammonium is going to be the same process. For nitrogen, you've got five. Each hydrogen donates one for a total of four. This time the overall charge is a plus one. So that means we have to lose an electron to account for the one plus charge of the ion. So now I have eight total electrons to make everybody happy. I'm going to put the nitrogen in the center, each hydrogen on the outside. Each hydrogen is going to follow the duet rule. Nitrogen is going to follow the octet rule. And I still have to put it in brackets and write the charge. Okay, and we'll do lots of practice in these in, in um, class as well. Now, where's my cursor? There we go. This is just prosin. Here's the sulfate ion. That's the same thing. The hydroxide ion. All right. And the last thing that I got to talk, you've got ozone. You guys can follow along this way. Now with ozone, what we need to talk about is the fact that there's two completely equal arrangements, meaning that one of them has a double bond on one side and one of them has a single bond on the other side. And the reality of it is that it's an average. So when we have a structure like this that's really in the middle of two, it's what's called, now this is it's sharing three instead of four, you don't have to necessarily worry about that, but you should understand that it's an average of these two structures. And that's a situation that's called resonance. And for resonance, it's bonding between atoms that cannot be represented in, this should say, one Lewis structure, not in on Lewis structure. And you want to show all possible structures with a double-ended arrow to show that the electrons are what we refer to, refer to as being delocalized. So all that means is that if I have a double bond and a single bond on both sides, I have to put this double-ended arrow to show it can be one or the other. Um, honestly, for these so long as you know that the double-ended arrow means resonance and can identify it, that there's two options, that's really what I kind of need you to do for that. And on nitrate, your notes are fuzzy, so you need to draw these three options in there for nitrate, because nitrate, you've got a double bond on one end, a single bond on the other, so there's three options for the nitrate ion. So you got to get that copied in your notes. Okay, we'll do lots of practice in class, so I hope that